you know, I looked up Lucero in the Spanish English Dictionary and it was any bright star. But I mean, across the board, it's just like, oh, you named your band after John Lucero. And it's just like, no. I actually messaged him the other day on Facebook trying to get him to put out a non-Lucero Lucero board. And I never heard back from him. I was like, hey, I got an idea. <laughs> Do a lot of the older dudes you interview geek out a little bit, or are we just special? I imagine this isn't just it. I think it's probably the wall. <laughs> I'm just going to put the board down and watch. Like, I know I'm supposed to be, I need to be just in the mix, but I think just getting it, getting in the building is counts, it constitutes being in the mix enough, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I got into it in uh, freshman year in high school, or I got into skateboarding freshman year of high school, but it was a punk rock thing. I was that nerd kid wearing uh, kangaroo shoes and Hawaiian shirts and getting beat up kind of thing, and then you start noticing the kids that wearing the vans and the haircuts, and I think it was just the misfit kind of thing to where you and the 12 other people at this high school that was all cheerleaders and football players, and it just seemed right. Growing up skateboarding in Memphis, Tennessee was not like growing up skateboarding in California. You know, it was, people threw shit at you. You didn't want to get caught alone skating back home from somewhere, a session or somebody's house. And it's not just the South, it's small town anywhere. I lived out in the country. No street lights, two lane roads, and, and like I said, just- They'd come into the part of town where I live because we actually had curbs. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, it's true. You know, you'd go street skate you can do some, people would build ramps in the backyards or you'd have launch ramps or like by the Agri Center they had those ditches yeah. that were terrible ditches, but you would just be like, I'll take it. Terrible is better than nothing. I think it's kind of awesome to grow up like that. Like you'd get excited and you'd see all the scenes and you'd read the mag, you know, the magazines and you know, you'd dream about going to California and skate. You'd dream about going to New York to see shows. But in a way we got really lucky having the community that we had. Something cool too is Cheapskates, Ron Hale from Cheapskates has been just like the stronghold there for literally 30 years and it's like you can still walk back in there and you're still like just like walking into the old skate shop. That would be the great equalizer or the meeting spot to where even if I came from one part of town and he was right. in another, hanging out at the skate shops. That first time you hear violent films, then that leads to the seven seconds and then that leads to skate rock. You grow up to a certain degree, you're listening to the radio, you're listening to whatever your parents are playing. But I think with skateboarding, there's an identity, I guess. And that was kind of one of those things, but there was all the bands that were coming out of, like, like I said, either punk rock or, I mean, the big boys were a Texas punk funk band that they skated, you know? And so much music that you had no idea about that nobody had any idea about. Discovering music through skate videos was just like, like I can remember the first time I heard, you know, Firehose, you know, Brave Captain. And it's like, I can still remember that moment. You know, and it's just like, what, what is this? You know, and it's like whatever was in the music column on Thrasher. And some of them, just terrible, terrible. Looking back on some of that stuff, you know, and you're just like, Phew. but some of it, you know, that's, that was the first time I'd ever heard mention of Fugazi was in the rumors section. Like they're starting a band. I think it's gonna be called Fugazi. From the band, we're both from Memphis. We're both from the same community of skateboarders and hardcore. And I guess some of it still translates and what we're still chasing after to a certain degree, some of that that tribal bond of like, you know, just the being being isolated and being kind of outsiders and but that tribal bond you have with other skaters and through skating and music and if you're skating you take two or three kids and you get in a car and you drive two or three hours to the next town, 
and you're looking for spots downtown and you see other kids skating, you know, all of a sudden you have instant friends. Let's go get some fucking Mountain Dew and let's go fucking skate. <laughs> This rail right here, right now, is one deck. Reading rock and roll biographies, making music, and watching skateboard videos, and putting like wheels on the concrete and skating every day.